Hi, this is John Richter here, and in this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the uh, liner options for your chest freezer into a cold plunge conversion. And uh, this is not going to be a super detailed uh, video, but I'm going to go into some of the basic options and what the pros and cons are of each one. So first of all, why do you want to line or put some kind of liner into the cold plunge? It's really just to help protect the cold plunge and to keep it from rusting or to add strength to the cold plunge. And um, that, that's really it. So do you really need a liner to start with? Actually, you don't. Uh, you can use the cold plunge. You still have to seal all of the seams and make sure that uh, water is not going to get in. And there's a number of ways to do that. But uh, if you do want to go with the li a liner route, uh, here are the options. So first of all, you could use some kind of uh, pond liner, just the big rectangular sheets that are uh, put into ponds. Uh, that's great. Um, I would recommend something made out of EDPM rather than uh, the, the rubber. Um, that you can get custom liners made out of PVC. There are paints that are used in swimming pools and hot tubs. There's epoxy, fiberglass, and then you have uh, spray liners. So uh, first of all, as far as the pond or EDPM liners, uh, that's really the most simple thing that you can use. Uh, you just buy a big old sheet that's, uh, you've got varying levels of thicknesses, and you just kind of stuff it into your chest freezer. Uh, you just need to fold up the corners, and uh, it, it'll probably overlap or uh, fall out of the outside, and that just keeps it from, you know, uh, going down into the chest freezer. But uh, that's probably the least expensive option you can get uh, for any type of liner. Uh, again, if you're going to use that type of liner, you absolutely still need to seal all of the seams because the main downside of uh, the pond liner or even the custom PVC liners is that if those things crack or if the seam breaks or if they get a hole in it somehow, uh, that water is still going to fill up into the entire chest freezer. And if you haven't sealed all the seams, you're going to have some serious problems. So there's a, a lot of people out there who have used those just big black pond liners, and those are working pretty well. Um, I actually had a custom uh, liner made out of uh, PVC. You really can't uh, <laughs> tell the shape here, but uh, I custom measured the entire inside of, of the uh, chest freezer, including the little compartment or the insert for where the compressor was. And uh, this was a very high quality lining made out of PVC. Uh, it was thick, I think it's something like 20 um, millimeters. Um, so it seemed like a really good lining. It was expensive to have this done. But again, the main problem with this, and I ended up not using it because I, um, I went in another direction. Uh, but uh, that's a whole other story. But I want to just give you a close-up look at um, the seam that's on here. These, uh, I don't know if you can see that there, but the seams here, where these things come together, is really where the biggest potential problem is. And uh, reading through a lot of online forums for people who have used liners of various types, uh, the, the seams can be reinforced, but there's a lot of patch kits and repair kits and a lot of discuss, discussion and conversation about how to repair broken or leaking seams. So if you're going to use some kind of liner like this, uh, again, you've got to make sure that you seal all of the internal seams on your chest freezer before you put the liner in there. And actually, I uh, this thing was between three to four hundred dollars. I don't remember the exact price, but if I had to do it over again. I wouldn't order this. Uh, I would think more of a long-term, long-haul, permanent solution uh, for a liner. So um, the next thing is to use uh, some kind of paint. There's a lot of swimming pool paints that you can use, and that is an option. You still need to seal the tub either before or after you paint. There's various opinions about that. Uh, the biggest thing that I've run into with regards to paint is that on uh, if you read enough swimming pool forums and hot tub forums about people trying to fix leaks in their swimming pool, this paint uh, tends to have a lot of problems long term. Uh, in my opinion, it's not a great uh, long term solution. Uh, my idea is let's do it once right the first time so you don't have to do it again. It's always less expensive to do it right the first time than to have to do it over later on. Uh, so the paint is an option, but again, in my opinion, not a, a great long term solution. Uh, the next thing is to use a type of epoxy. Um, if you have the right kind of epoxy, again, I'm not going to go into details on this, but uh, I've uh, we have reports from a number of people who have used epoxies on there, and that's a better solution than the paint. Some of this stuff is pretty heavy duty, and it looks like it's going to be a good long-term solution. And the great thing about the epoxy is that it does um, it is going to seal all of the seams that are inside of the chest freezer. 
Uh, now the thing with when you get into the paints and the epoxies, what's typically going to happen is you're going to have to rough up, the, depending on what type of uh, inside is on, on your freezer, if it's painted, you're going to have to sand or rough that up so that the epoxy or the paint will actually stick to it. And that certainly adds a whole other level of work and complication to that process to make sure that it's done correctly. Fiberglass liners are another option. Uh, you can buy fiberglass kits to where you can put in um, uh, fiberglass, uh, or you can, if you have a boat repair shop in your area, those guys uh, work with fiberglass, and if they're not too busy, uh, you could probably get those guys to do it for you. Uh, the boat guys that I talk to here in where I am in Austin uh, were way too busy to take on my little small job for uh, converting a chest freezer. It just wasn't worth it for them. And for me, the amount of uh, work that would have been required for the do-it-yourself option was more than I really wanted to uh, take on. But um, that the the fiberglass, based again on everything that I've read and uh, the conversations that I've had, conversations that I've had, the people I've talked to that do work in the fiberglass. If this stuff works for boats, it is absolutely going to be a good solution for your chest freezer. And that is a good solution. It's a long-term solution. It's a do it once and you'll probably never ever have to mess with it again type of solution. Um, the solution that I ended up going with is the spray liner solution. Uh, there's a lot of different options out there and there's a lot of things to look into. These are basically the same uh, type of materials that we use for spray liners for uh, pickup trucks like the bed liner material. Um, one of the big concerns about the spray liner material is that they're depending on what chemical is used, and I'm not going to go into all the details here, this is just a basic overview video, uh, there's a lot of really toxic stuff out there. So some of the cheaper companies making the bed liners, uh, or some of the cheaper bed liners made from companies uh, have chemicals in them that are really toxic to human beings that you know, it's, uh, can cause allergies as well as other health problems. And if you're going through all the effort to convert a uh, chest freezer into a cold plunge, you're probably doing this for health benefits. So the last thing you want to do is be soaking in a uh, chemical or or, uh, in a tub that has a liner that could leach into your water and cause you to get sick or make you sick just in the process of putting it in. Um, the bed liners that are better, the truck bed liners, those things are not designed to really uh, hold water. They will, but again, there's some potential concern about the chemicals and what could be leaching into the water. So if you are going to use a spray liner, what I would recommend is to use something that is uh, FDA approved for potable water, and that means that it can be used in municipal water supplies and those big water tanks or water towers, uh, and that means that there's nothing that's going to leach into the water itself after you've uh, after the lining has cured and dried, uh, it, it's going to be fine. Or after it's dried and cured, uh, it's going to be totally fine, and and uh, it's not going to leach chemicals, you're going to be totally safe. So that's the type of liner that I went with. Uh, it's worked very well. Uh, the benefit of having the fiberglass or the uh, spray liner is that it's going to add a lot of strength to the cold tub itself, to the chest freezer. These things were not designed to hold water and uh, I'd, I've done the math, but I don't remember the exact calculations, but it's putting a lot of pressure, and I did notice that the walls, the external walls on my chest freezer were, were buckling. Um, you know, if you wanted to put some kind of exterior strapping around there, you could do that as well, uh, you know, cable ropes or whatever. That's another solution. Uh, but the bed liner does, uh, or the, the spray liner, or the fiberglass would uh, add strength to the chest freezer as well as sealing all of the seams. If you're going to seal uh, the chest freezer or apply a liner that is uh, a, a fiberglass or an epoxy or a spray liner, I would recommend going ahead and uh, going ahead and sealing up the drain that's on there. Uh, that way you just know it's going to work. Uh, there's no questions whatsoever. Uh, you'll never have to worry about it. And then you can find other ways with pumps or siphons to get the water out or into the chest freezer. Uh, but that just makes sure you've got a complete solution. Uh, the more simple the solution, uh, from a maintenance standpoint and a long-term haul standpoint, uh, the better it's going to be, the less things that you're going to have to fiddle with. So uh, anyway, that's a quick overview of the liner options for the chest freezers. Uh, leave some comments. Let me know what you've done. Uh, show some pictures. Post your pictures. Let's see what you've done uh, with your chest freezer. Let us know how it worked out for you. And um, let's... Uh, Let's uh, com contribute and all learn from one another. So uh, happy chest freezer converting. Let me know if you have any questions.